Hey guys, how are you going? My name is Dom and welcome to your 40 second Rust tutorial. So in this one I want to talk about how to pass or decode JSON. Now what this means is that we're able to take a serialized JSON string and then convert it into some sort of usable data structure. So let's get right into it. Um, inside your cargo.toml file you want to make sure that you have the cert the CERD JSON and CERD derived dependencies included right there. And they're all one and one and one for all those three. All right. Now, once that's done inside your main program, what we're going to do is we're going to use or import those libraries. Now, I'm going to show you two ways to do this, um, to decode JSON. Uh, the first way will be um, essentially the simple way. And that means that you access the the data through an array like syntax and the second way is going to be where we actually map the JSON um, data to an actual struct and that's probably the um, the better way so let's look at the first way first so what you want to do is actually just um, firstly just use the third JSON crate so up here you want to type one uh, sorry type out extern crates and then third underscore json okay so now we can actually start using that crate the first thing we're going to do is write a use declaration so we're going to say okay let's use the third json uh, hold on the third json value struct as json value now here this value struct part of the sir json crate um, that one represents a json value this could be a string a null um, a boolean array etc so that um, represents that right there now we're going to reference this um, struct using a json value anywhere in our code so when we see json value we actually mean that right there and that's what the as does okay so now, inside the main function, we're going to first declare a JSON string to actually deserialize and decode. So let's define a new JSON string. We'll call this one JSON underscore string equal to a Rust raw string. So I'm going to say, okay, R hashtag and then um, double quotes like that. So now this raw string allows us to uh, make multi-line strings with um, with these inside, and, uh, you know, all sort of nice formatting. Okay, so inside here we're going to create a JSON um, JSON string. So let's have an object with three properties. We're going to have name, all right, equal to Dominic. We're going to have an age property, something like sixty-five as a number, and also an is male property a boolean for me that's going to be true all right so now we're going to uh, take this json string and then um, deserialize it into the data structure so to do this we're going to make use of the from str or the from string method or function on the sir json create so down here Right, so this this function returns you a result so we're gonna have to check if everything was successful so we're gonna say okay let res short for result equal to and then third json calling the from string function inside here we're going to pass in this json string okay just like that so now the res uh, variable is of type results. Now this could have potentially failed. Just say we make this something like, okay, we'll get rid of that, put some, you know, some characters in there. That is now invalid JSON, so that means this function will essentially fail. So to actually check for this failure, uh, we use the result type. So down here, we're gonna say, okay, if res dot is okay, and that means if the JSON um, was valid and we could actually pass it so if it's okay then we're going to do this we're going to 
create a new variable called p, short for past, of type JSON value. So that one up there. Okay. This will be equal to the return value of unwrap on this result. So we're going to say, okay, JSON value equals, sorry, p equals res dot unwrap. All right. Okay. So now we essentially have the JSON um, deserialized and it's stored inside this p um, uh, variable. Now the JSON value struct is recursive, which means that this right here is essentially um, a bunch of more JSON values, which means from this, we can actually do this. We're going to print line, and we're going to say the name. The name is, inside here we're going to pass in P, and then use an array-like syntax here to get the name. Okay, so P and access the name property, that one right there. So now, we can just add an else down here and we'll just say, okay, if the JSON could not get passed, then we're going to say, um, sorry, could not pass JSON. All right, something like that. All righty, so now we can run this program and see how we go. Press cargo run, press enter, and what do we get? Probably an error. Let's see. All right, we could not pass JSON. I wonder why. Let's just go up here and check this one. Okay, here we go. Boom, colon. All right. We can save one more time and try it again. This time, what do we get? The name is Dominic, so it worked. Now, it's got double quotes around that name. The reason for that is that this P name returns you or gives you the type, um, I believe it's called JSON string which means that it's going to have those double quotes. So to actually convert it into a normal Rust string, you can use the dot as str method, but that is going to give you an option. So just for the sake of this, um, just for the sake of this example, I'm going to use the unwrap method on that just to simplify things. This is not recommended because it might obviously um, fail. You might not actually get a string out of this. So we're getting an option from here and then we're unwrapping it like that. All right. Now, if we save this one and then run this program, we now should see Dominic with no double quotes. And what do we get? Dominic with no double quotes. Perfect. So that is the first way to pass JSON in Rust. The second way makes use of these two extra um, crates here. So let's just first up here, we're going to uh, start using those crates. So down here, we're going to say, okay, extern crates, we're going to use the third crate, and also we're going to use the, the third derived crate. Okay, but up here, we want to actually add the, um, the attribute macro underscore use. Okay, from there, that allows us to then create a struct and then derive that struct from the serialize and deserialize traits. I'll just show you how this thing works. So down here, let's define a new struct. Now, this struct is going to basically be a template for the for this JSON string. So essentially, these properties here are going to be members of the struct that we're going to define up here. Then from there, this uh, JSON will then um, simply just uh, map these values onto your actual struct sort of automatically and it's quite cool so up here let's define a new struct called person all right and give it three members name of type string capital S have one called age of type u8 and an is male boolean type all right we have these three members which are the same names as these three properties in this JSON string. We want to also add the derive um, attribute up here. So we're going to say, okay, derive, serialize, and deserialize. And that right there is going to automatically uh, hold on, deserialize. Okay, deserialize. Okay, so that right there is going to automatically 
um, derive this struct by the serialized and deserialized traits found in Sir JSON. Okay, so that then allows you to uh, use this functionality. So down here, we're going to change a few things. We're going to keep that the way it is. That'll stay the same. But down here, we're going to change this type right here. We're going to say that p is going to be equal to instead now a person. So we're unwrapping the result, the same thing, but instead we're going to get a person now because the person implements or, you know, derives from those two crates. Okay. And now that will map these values and assign them to these members right here. All right. For you automatically. So now instead of using the P name array syntax, we'll get rid of all of that and then instead just say p.name to access the name member that one right there okay so now if we save this one and run this program hopefully we get a successful result let's see what happens and we get the name is Dominic perfect we get a few warnings here because I'm not using the JSON value um, struct but we can um, we can see if we make a few more, let's just copy and paste these. Just for example, we'll say, okay, the age is, and then p.age, and then are they male? Question mark, we're gonna say, okay, is male. All right, let's just try running this one, and we should see a similar result with some more values. And what do we get? We get that right there. The name is Dominic, the age is 65, and are they male? It is true. So with this method, we are actually making the correct types. You know, everything is sort of mapped automatically for you, and it's quite easier to use, I guess. So that is how you can decode or pass JSON with Rust. And it's all thanks to the Surd JSON crate or the Surd JSON library. All right. Thank you for watching, and I'll see you later.